We identified a need for software developers and software expertise within the Space Force for a while. We need that organic piece to help augment the contractor teams that had been really developing the software for us. Super coders are what we call the guardians who graduate from the Software Development Immersive Program, which is a three month long boot camp where they do some very intensive software development training and education. They do this fully remote, full time, eight hours a day, five days a week. They'll learn a variety of skills, mostly the tech stack that they use is Java based. And they actually learn how to write code to fit our government cybersecurity standards. Up to actually how to deploy it onto military systems using Platform One. So they'll talk about object-oriented programming, they'll talk about databases and hooks and CICD pipelines, and then they'll practice with group projects where they actually will do paired programming and test-driven development on the tech stacks that they learn in the course. It doesn't require any experience. On my cohort, we got people with master's degree in computer science, and we got other folks, they saw a YouTube video about coding, and they got interested. At the end, we're all at the same level. They teach us a lot of the, the agile methodologies and really the, they give us a baseline for understanding how to develop software applications. In the last two weeks, the students actually will work in groups to do a capstone project and the capstone problem statements are actually sourced from the Space Force. And then we show it to other military folks and they express like how cool it is or any feedback and how can we change it to create something for the Space Force specifically. They actually get hands-on experience working on real Space Force problem statements during the course. So I'll just come up the stage with a hearty congratulations to this particular cadre, one for being selected for this challenging and competitive program and for completing and presenting these amazing uh, capstones. Thanks a lot for all of your hard work and really looking forward to seeing what we're going to do together in the future. And afterwards, during the internship, they'll work on product teams at software factories where the products are based on validated needs from the Space Force. Following that three-month boot camp, they have a three-month internship at one of the software factories in the Space Force. If I interned with an application called Battle Drill at Space Camp, the internship really sets you up for the success of could you go out in the real world and do it? The internship really allows you to integrate with a full team, and that's one of the things that you don't really have in the SDI right now. Working with a program manager and a designer, and then sitting down with the other developers and pairing with them allows you to pick up a lot of the necessary skills that you don't normally pick up just by going through a class. When I first started on my internship with the app called Genesis, so my work with them, it was either the front end or the back end. I actually just heard a story for one of their interns that was on there. He was part of their team developing Genesis, and then one of the people from Force Ops came to them with a problem discussing some of the maintenance schedules that they have and if there's any ways that they can help develop that. Well, the contract was constricted in being able to do this, but this supercoder wasn't constrained by that contract and so was able to immediately start working on this and his internship was actually extended to help him develop this for his unit. We decided to work on one specific area that's a more. It's a MILSATCOM operation request. We have to schedule it because if we do something wrong and lose the satellite, the communication, a lot of people can be affected. So we're trying to work now with them on how to make that process easier and faster and that way it's less conflicts and make our mission more efficient. So when this program stood up, there was a lot of debate at the senior leader level about whether or not we should have a separate AFSC for coders or if we wanted to use a prefix or track them some other way. In the end, we decided to use a prefix, which is AFSC agnostic. The Z prefix is something that they're awarding us after we've completed the course or if you go through a separate pipeline to get awarded it without having to go through the full software development immersives. The Z prefix will be used to identify individuals with the skill sets that then would fit into those specific positions across the Space Force. For myself, I'm a 13S, so I'd be a Z13S. It allows us to pick up positions specifically suited for being a super coder. To give commanders the capability to, uh, to identify who within under their command can actually solve these problems, it lets us put them at software development factories and develop the combat development team structure. Some of them will work hand-in-hand -hand with the combat development teams across the Space Force, bridge the gap between user discovery, pain point evaluation, and then the actual solution generation. While also promoting environments where we're able to work in, it's almost cliche, but in an agile fashion, we need to fail fast. We need to be able to come in, come with a solution, find out if it doesn't work, 
and immediately be able to move on to something else rather than find something, pay a bunch of money for it, but it doesn't work out, but we paid for it, so we need to keep it. Supercoders had a ton of visibility at uh, higher levels of the Space Force headquarters. Even General Raymond himself was a big supporter of Supercoders. Um, he identified early on that there was a need for software development expertise in the Space Force and was very happy that we had a pathway to train people to be able to do that. I think the Supercoder program is amazing. I wanted to learn more and I wanted to be able to find a way to do it more officially, but things just didn't exist. It wasn't something that you could do, but now with the creation of the Supercoder program, people that have that aptitude can really start applying to get into a position where they can actually make a huge impact. As we grow our program, we will be able to make more substantial impacts across the Space Force. Even in the capstones for the SDI, they're still getting requests for how do I get your application, even though they built it in two weeks. So imagine if you gave people a year. We get a, a lot of inquiries from higher level leadership. They want to know how many and where are they and when can we get some more. Leaders are within the Space Force are very excited about the program and just how many people are interested in being a super coder. Every cohort we get hundreds of applicants because there's just that many people who want to be a part of it. It'll take us some time, but I think that we'll, we'll have probably one of the coolest programs in the Space Force. To apply to Supercoders or to learn more, you can visit our website at supercoders.us.